Hello everyone, I'm Udani Vijayavardhana from Faculty of Health Arts and Design. Today my speech is about modeling the effectiveness of the Fox Eradication Program for local shorebirds on Phillip Island. My principal supervisor is Professor Denny Mayer and my associate supervisors are Dr. Madhav Veerasinghe and Dr. Pragalatan Aputure. Predation is one of the main causes of biodiversity loss, particularly in island ecosystems. Predation critically threatens many rare species. Introduced predators are especially responsible for the extinction of endemic birds, with many bird species only surviving on small predator-free offshore islands. Predator control methods include environmental modification, biological control, mechanical barriers and repellents, trapping and transplanting, hunter harvest, control killing and economic reimbursement. Australian conservation manager, managers have used a range of actions to reduce predation pressure in order to recover threatened species over recent decades. Many bird species are now restricted to habitats within protected areas which provide some degree of protection from predators. Predator removal is an effective strategy for the conservation of vulnerable bird species in that it increases hatching success, fledgling success, and breeding populations. Researchers have found that nearly 30% of the threatened bird species of oceanic islands are currently at risk from alien invasive species. Uh, therefore, making the removal of predators is an important issue for nature conservation. When available, it is possible to use predator abundance data to estimate the probability of eradication success using levels of search effort and times for the last predator sign recorded. An alternative approach is to use prey abundance as the measure of success. In this research, we concern the eradication of red foxes from Phillip Island in Victoria, Australia as a means of controlling predation of shorebirds. No assessment has been conducted to identify the effectiveness of the fox eradication program in the context of local shorebirds on Phillip Island. We have considered only the most common Phillip Island shorebirds, namely the black fronted dotterel, black wing stilt, Mass lapwing, pyro stickatcher, and locally threatened sutio stickatcher and hooded plover. As our measure of success of the fox eradication program, we use the increase in population size for these shorebird species. Since 1945, the main access point for migrant foxes is likely to have been a 600 meters bridge that has connected the island to the mainland. Fox control measures had been practiced from about 1918, mainly to protect ground nesting shorebirds and seabirds. A specialized fox control team was established on Phillip Island in the early 1980s. These efforts were initially not successful. Uh, therefore, an eradication program began in 2006, which included three phases, lockdown, cleanup, and post-eradication. The initial lockdown phase focused on the poisoning of red foxes island-wide using biting, augmented by spotlight shooting, trapping, and hunting with dogs. An effective knockdown was declared in 2011. Uh, when a decrease of the fox population was recorded in fox sign, sightings, and catch of a data. The cleanup phase required further efforts in addition to island-wide intensive biting with a range of bite types and efforts to prevent fox migration across the beach. We have focused on annually aggregated data taking the location of each sighting into account because the eradication milestones were detected annually. Annual records for local shorebirds on Phillip Island were obtained from the Atlas of Living Australia database uh, between 2002 to 2017. The annual resident human population data was obtained from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. To cross-validate our results, we have considered estimated fox population numbers for the same period.
The integrated Laplace approximation model, also known as INLA, is a popular, robust approximation tool for fitting Bayesian models rather than the traditional Marco chain Monte Carlo method. The key advantages of INLA are the ease to write and modify complex codes for complex models and the speed at which inference can be done even for spatial problems with hundreds of thousands of observations. INLA allows a wide range of different functions such as generalized linear mixed models, spatial autocorrelation, temporal autocorrelation and spatiotemporal models combining this variety with its simplicity and computational efficiency. This is becoming increasingly important in ecology. In spatiotemporal settings, it is often assumed that the covariance is separable in space and time. Therefore, the temporal structure has modeled using an autoregressive process and stru uh, spatial structure has modeled using stochastic partial differential equations. These INLA models were fitted using R INLA. Temporal INLA modeling allows for the effect of spatial autocorrelation in the data, thereby producing more accurate models. Number of sightings for each survey specifying the locations in the Atlas of Living Australia, allowing us to accurately incorporate spatial effects in the analysis. Here we hypothesized an increasing trend in show abundance in response to the Fox eradication program. An autoregressive model was fit to the residuals to account for the short-term fluctuation of the abundance trend and a fixed effect was assumed for the year in order to account for the long-term trend. Human-related activities and those of their pets constitute a significant threat for shorebirds. Therefore, we added resident human population to our model in order to control for these threats as well as to control for some of the biases inherent in our citizen science data assuming the citizen science activity has increased on the island in conjunction with the resident human population. Visitor numbers to the island are large but only during the summer holidays and therefore could be ignored. The negative binomial distribution is assumed for the annual number of sightings allowing for overdispersion. Overdispersion is the presence of greater variability in the data than is typically observed for a given distribution. It is also known as statistical dispersion. The zero inflated negative binomial model allows for the joint temporal modeling of occurrence and abundance data. The abundance part of the model consists of a log linear regression for the number of non-zero sightings and the zero inflation part of the model consists of a logistic regression allowing for excess zeros in the years when no sightings occurred. The models included the year and human resident population as fixed effects. Change point analysis is a powerful new tool for determining whether a change has taken place. It is capable of detecting subtle changes and better characterizing the changes detected by providing confidence levels and confidence intervals. We have used four change point detection methods to compare and access when changes occurred in the number of sightings for Phillip Island shorebirds. We wanted to identify whether the milestone years for the Fox eradication program corresponded to the change points detected. We hypothesized a significant increase in the number of sightings on or immediately after the 2006 and 2011, which corresponded to the start of the knockdown phase and cleanup phase of the Fox eradication program. The change point methods we have used are referred to as breakpoint, cube seg, um, change point, and BCP. Our results have shown that since 2004, the abundance for all frequently observed shorebirds on Phillip Island has increased significantly, suggesting that predation has reduced or that citizen science reporting has increased over the years. Figure 1 illustrates these changes in the abundance for the six local shorebirds on a log scale for the period from 2002 to 2017 together with estimated fox numbers for this period. The decline in fox numbers appeared to be matched by increases in shorebird numbers. 
The effect of resident human population has been found to be non-significant for five of the local shorebird species reported and significantly negative only for black green stilt, suggesting that it is unlikely that increased citizen science reporting is responsible for this change. Lots of these four change point methods are shown in figure 2. The steps of figure 2 show the change points. The x-axis displays the year from 2002 to 2017 and the y-axis displays the mean number of sightings for the um, breakpoint, change point and CUMSEG methods and the posterior probability of a change point for the BCP method. The BCP method uses a probability of 0.7 as the threshold required to identify a change point. All these methods consistently identified the start of the cleanup phase, that means 2011-2012 period. There was less consistency in the case of the start of the knockdown phase, although the method um, the change point method did consistently identify the start of this period as 2006-2007 for all species. Table 2 shows a summary of these results, assuming that the start of the knockdown phase should have produced an increase in showbed numbers in 2006-2007 period. The failure of the BCP method to identify the start of the knockdown period can probably be attributed to the high 70% threshold set for this method. The trend estimates provided by the INLA model suggest a linear increasing trend for all the shorebird species. The resident human population in Phillip Island has a significant negative effect only for the black green stilt without any significant effect for other species. There are no significant effects for the zero inflation probability part, suggesting that the probability of zero sightings is not time or population related. All these methods have consistently identified the start of the cleanup phase, and there was less consistency in the case of the start of the knockdown phase. Although the change point method did consistently identify the start of this period as 2006-2007 for all the species. These results confirm that the staging of the knockdown and cleanup stages of the fox eradication program were aligned with the abundance of shorebirds. In particular, this was true for the locally threatened hooded plover and sooty oyster catcher, which means that the eradication program milestones detected in this way can be effective especially for threatened shorebird species. By accommodating temporal variation in la models have been shown to be capable of modeling the effects of a pest eradication program in a reliable manner, suggesting that these models can be used for assessing other conservation efforts in the future. These results suggest the change point methods can be considered as as a useful tool for assessing the effectiveness of conservation efforts over time, perhaps assisting with the scheduling of changes in the conservation management when appropriate. And also the results of this study suggest that there may be other areas in which citizen science data can be beneficial for conservation management, reducing costs while stimulating more public interest in conservation and also suggested that the monitoring of prey, even secondary types of prey can be can provide useful confirmation for deciding when programs designed to eradication pests can be judged a success allowing these programs to move into their post eradication program. These are few references. Thank you for your attention.